This is Free Talk Live. You can take control of the airwaves by dialing in toll-free at 1-800-259-9231. That's the SACL CAI toll-free line. 800-259-9231. Join us online at freetalklive.com. We give you the features on the site there for free, so enjoy those on us. Again, that's freetalklive.com. Uh, joining me tonight, Mark Edge is out, uh, out until I think next week or something like that. He's out at a, at a wedding, and Stephanie Murphy is here. Hello. Hey, Stephanie. You, now, you're the, you are the host of uh, Pork Therapy. That's right. And I know a number of our listeners have been uh, turned on to pork, uh, pork Therapy because of your calls to the show, and of course, we put you on the, the Liberty Radio Network as well. Yes, I over, appreciate that. Yep, over at lrn.fm, and people can go to Pork Therapy, that's pork with a C, uh, porktherapy.com to hear more of you. Mm -hmm. So you're going to sit in throughout the entire show tonight, and I kind of sprung a surprise on you, and I guess I'm springing it on uh, pretty much our our entire listenership here. It's a good surprise. It is a good surprise, because we have a special guest here on the third microphone, Mr. Lou Rockwell. Welcome to Free Talk Live. Ian, it's great to be here. I I feel like I'm in the, the northern capital of libertarianism. Ooh, Southern well, capital being Auburn. That's but, quite a compliment. Uh, yeah, I'm, can I take that as so an we endorsement? Have to have like a, I feel like of a yes. pincer movement on D.C. from the north and the south. So what's the so Auburn would be the southern? Yeah, uh, that's capital? what I'm thinking. Yeah, and obviously you, there are many places. I'm just teasing. But. That's where you came from uh, to visit the uh, the Northeast. And apparently, you've got family that, or you're originally from the the region, not not New Hampshire. But I'm from near Boston. Uh, but uh, my mother was from New Hampshire, not far from oh. Keene here. So uh, uh, it's great to be. It's it's sort of home. Wow. So it's uh, I've always been thrilled by what uh, you guys are doing on this show and, of course, the Free State Project and uh, uh, what Stephanie's doing at Dartmouth and so all, <laughs> all kinds of great stuff going on in New Hampshire. Well, for our, for our uninitiated listeners, uh, Lou, uh, can you give your, uh, maybe a, a short, who are you? Who is Lou Rockwell? Well, let's see. I, I, uh, as I mentioned, I'm from near Boston. I've had a series of, I must say, magnificent jobs that have really been uh, a thrill when I was uh, uh, about your age, I, I was uh, editor at, an, at a publishing house called Arlington House in New Rochelle, New York. And one of my authors was Ludwig von Mises. I mean, you know, wow. how can, mm-hmm. you can't get much better than that. Henry Hazlitt, uh, Murray Rothbard. So I got to meet and deal with a whole uh, lot of great heroes. And I um, also had the chance to be uh, chief of staff to Congressman Ron Paul and uh, worked very closely with Murray Rothbard for many years at the Mises Institute in and before that, and I just had to, you know, and uh, after working for Ron, I, I founded the Mises Institute about uh, 28 years ago, and uh, I've had a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, now, the Mises Institute, has it always been down in Auburn? It's always been in Auburn. This is a terrible thing to admit. I actually started it, this is horrible, in Washington, D.C. Well, it's a good place it. to leave. No, so I, I soon <laughs> left, and uh, um, so it's it, it's ironic. I mean, we at that time, I thought, perhaps incorrectly, that the Institute had to be affiliated with a university economics department. And Auburn's was the only one in the country interested in having anything to do with this. Hmm. It's a very different situation today. You know, Austrian economics has a, a much uh, broader audience in, in the academic world than it did then. Would you say that's thanks to the Internet? Internet has been a huge, a huge effect. Um, I remember in the old days, we were just thrilled if somebody was able to phone us or write us and say, I'm interested in Mises or I'm interested in uh, Austrian economics. So, yeah, the beginning of we, – we had our first website in 1995, right at the very beginning. And, uh, yeah, it's been just – that's been made all the difference for us and, of course, for many other uh, classical liberal and libertarian ideas. So and it, for my own website, LouRockwell.com. So I was going to get to that. You, you mentioned yeah. you had uh, a website for the Mises Institute. When did LouRockwell.com get uh, – when did that come into being? It started in 1999. Uh, it was an outgrowth of, of a – sort of an email list I had. I was so upset at Carter's wars on, on uh, Bosnia and Serbia and so forth and all the people he was killing. Clinton. Clinton, Clinton. excuse me. I didn't like Carter either, but... Um, no, they so all I started together. out, yeah, started out sending messages to this email list and that's then I decided, well, there was a place for a website like this, a libertarian website. Now, has it always... I mean, I've only been really tuned into it probably for the last five or so years. Has it always been the same general format where there's daily... Uh, articles and interest pieces uh, written oh, by it? people you know and other yes. people. Yeah, I mean, pretty much exactly the same. I mean, they're you know diff- different emphases depending on the issues of the time, but it looks the same. And uh, 
is pretty much the same emphasis. I mean, it's a great site for any of our listeners that haven't been. Uh, LouRockwell.com has been a great source of uh, show prep for Free Talk Live uh, oh, yeah. for, for many years. Uh, I, I can't count the number of pieces that we've shared just you know verbatim from uh, from your website. Well, thank you. William Norman Grigg, I think, is is one of my favorites. He's a hero. Mm-hmm. He's a great he is. Guy. Yeah, he's he's an, he's an amazing guy. Well, why do you say that? I mean, besides the fact that he's really great at writing about the uh, the oppressive police state, uh, what what else? Well, he got fired um, by the. He worked for the for the, the a magazine called the New American, published by the John Birch Society, and they fired him for not sharing their views about the glories of the police and the military oh. and similar things. Oh. And so he's had a very tough time since then. Um, but he really, I mean, he he's kept up the fight. He's a fighter. And uh, he speaks truth to power. And just, I think, he is the key guy on matters of police brutality and uh, related issues. Yeah, I was going to say, it sounds like he kind of ran with it when he got fired, because now he writes, like, almost exclusively about police brutality. Yes, and he's really, he's well known for it. Yeah. By the police, by the way, as well as Uh, by by the victims. Yeah, they don't like him. So, uh, so Lou, I mean, how how do you go about, go about this process of selecting every single day? Uh, is it just you? Are you the the these the editor of the website, or is there? I'm the th- editor, but I have a lot of people who help. I, I have people all over the world who send me articles, and of course, you soon learn when you're getting emails from people who who's worth paying attention to and who's not. Mm-hmm. So, I have people that I pay attention to, and I and I get their articles. I have because writers like Stephanie. Uh, people take a look at her archives on LRC, <laughs> Thank you. and um, so it's really, it's really. I have many, many helpers. I mean, it's, it's not just me; it's hundreds of people. Right. So you you take submissions from folks, and then there are certain ones that are outstanding. And then when those outstanding people send you something, they're more than likely going to get published. I would guess. Well, yes, there's that, and also just people send me links. Like uh, there, mm-hmm. I have a, a friend in Australia who sends me wonderful links, and he doesn't write, but he. Because he doesn't want it because of the place he works for. He's concerned that he might not last there if he were writing for a uh, an anarchist site. But um, So he sends me great stuff. And there are people in Europe, people in uh, Latin America, uh, people in Japan, um, really all over the world. So who both write and send suggested articles to link to. And you also have a blog, too. Right. There is a blog. Yeah, so that's yeah. sort of like a companion to the site. You, know, you can go there for kind yes. of a different style of content. People mm-hmm. post videos and uh, short you know, blurbs. I I love the blog. I think the blog is uh, is a great addition. It's relatively new, last few years, right? Yes, relatively new. And I remember I was uh, the first time I saw the blog, I was upset that I couldn't comment on it. And then I realized, thank <laughs> goodness I can't comment here because I would just get embroiled in comment wars and like just <laughs> commenting on things uh, back and forth because your site is incredibly popular. I mean, if you were to open up comments on the blog, it would just, I mean, there would be likely be hundreds of them. Well, there are there are reasons to open comments, but there are reasons not to. One one recent reason is because of the, all the copyright trolling that's going on. There's with the uh, tighter and tighter copyright laws from the the Digital Millennium Copyright Act and and what's happened subsequently. Mm-hmm. Um, so there are sites right now being sued for huge amounts of money by predatory lawyers connected to Obama, by the way, uh, because some commenter posted a piece of copyrighted material on their blog. Wow. And uh, wow. so it's, and if you're a small blog. And, so, but how does disabling the comments uh, help with that? Well, the people can, in other words, can't post. I have to, I have to. Oh, because the, people would be posting yeah. in the comments yes, section. Yes, I think there would be stuff. hundreds gotcha. and hundreds of people. Yeah, yeah it would be, it would be diff- very difficult to keep an I'd eye like on. I like traffic, yeah. but it's, it's, it's difficult to keep an eye on things. So, I mean, speaking of traffic, is, is it true, a true statement that com is the most trafficked libertarian or liberty oriented uh, website yes, on in the, the world, internet? Yeah. And in fact, it's the best read libertarian publication in history. If I can blow what, my own horn there for a moment, what, what, sure, and certainly the best read anarch, the best read anarchist publication ever to exist. How did that happen? Oh, hold that thought. Okay. <laughs> we'll get we'll get back to that here in moments. And now, if you've got a question for Lou Rockwell, he's with us and uh, is generously giving us to the uh, the end of the hour. So, plenty of time for your calls at one eight hundred two five. You don't mind taking some calls? No, me. glad to. All course. right, eight eight hundred two five nine ninety two thirty one. Also, I want to talk about your podcast, which is kind of uh, I don't know where it is right now. So, I want to find out what's going on with that. Uh, and I've got some other questions too. But your questions are as uh, are welcome as well at eight hundred two five nine ninety two thirty one. This is Free Talk Live with Lou Rockwell. This 
This is Free Talk Live. You can take control of the airwaves by dialing in toll-free, though if you've got a question for Lou Rockwell, your call will be given priority, at least for this hour. 800-259-9231. That number brought to you by SACL CAI. And one of the many things that uh, the, the good folks behind SACL CAI are involved in is Think Twice News. John Shaw and Osborne from Think Twice News and Think Twice Productions uh, have teamed up once again with the mighty Stefan Molyneux, another Lou Rockwell uh, article contributor to present a uh, brave new epic video the sunset of the state see it now at thinktwicenews.com that's thinktwicenews.com uh, you can join us online by the way at freetalklive.com we've got various different ways for you to listen in uh, of course our live streams are there 24 7 the latest episode of free talk live is available for you plus our listen lines allow you to call in from any phone that can dial long distance and listen to Free Talk Live. Plus, there's our webcam. And if you're watching the webcam right now, you can see Lou Rockwell is sitting with us here in the studio. Uh, the man behind the Mises Institute. Are you the founder of the, the Mises Institute? I did. I had that great pleasure. And are you now the president of the Mises the, Institute? No, what's, I'm what's chairman. Doug chairman. French is the president. Okay. Uh, and, of course, also the, the, the founder and the editor behind LouRockwell.com, the number one liberty-oriented website Period across the board, nothing. I don't know. Does anything even come close? What's your what's what's your biggest competitor? If you even know, uh, I don't actually know. I don't but either. They're all. I think they're all somewhat behind. Yes. Maybe it'll be freetalklive.com dot well, someday. It could be, and especially now that you're on eighty two stations. <laughs> yes, we were talking, we were talking about that off the air about that. Uh, yeah, we just picked up Maui. In fact, uh, we should have an eighty third, but I haven't confirmed that they're on uh, yet. They should have started this past weekend. Oh, and, thrilling. Oh, cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be at four hundred before you know it. I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, so thanks for coming in here, uh, Lou. You're actually here physically in person, which is really a pleasure. And uh, we've never met before. Uh, no. you, you've never met Stephanie before. Never met She's... Stephanie before, although, of course, I know Stephanie because of her, her articles for LRC. Yep. And get a little closer on that, mic if you Oops, if sorry. you don't mind. Just the better, the closer you are, the better you sound. We're going to take some calls for you here. Uh, if you've got a question for Lou Rockwell, eight hundred two five nine ninety two thirty one. But there's a lot to uh, a lot to talk about here. And I did mention I wanted to touch on your podcast because I had emailed your producer about uh, the Lou Rockwell show, which is your podcast. You've been doing it for about a, a year at least, I would say. Yeah, several years. Uh, f- several years. Although it's okay. idiot, you know, it's it's uh, um, not always it's doesn't compete with your radio show for keeping to schedule right right and that was what i was wondering about because it was going strong for a while and then it kind of dropped off and then it came back and there was a few episodes that were produced and it's dropped off again i don't think there's been one in a month and a half maybe two months is it going to come back lou yeah there are a whole bunch of them scheduled okay um john taylor gatto uh, and many other great great guests coming up ron paul and Excellent. uh yeah good to hear but they're it's uh it was it. daily for a time but that got to be a little too expensive. Once a week would be great. I mean, having the uh, the consistency of publishing is is good because you keep your listeners kind of hooked in and they know what to, they know what to expect. They know what's, well, I, what's coming yeah, up. You're an expert, so I appreciate that advice. I think that's Take very it or good leave advice. It, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, we had you on LRN.FM, which is the Liberty Radio Network. Yes. That's kind of my little uh, hobby project where I've taken various different. Uh, Liberty-oriented hosts. Stephanie's got her show. Uh, Stefan Molyneux, of course, has a great mm-hmm. show. And so we've got about a dozen different uh, shows. Some of them are live. Most of them are, as yours are, podcast. And, and most of them are kind of a once-a-week sort of uh, sort of thing. But basically, we load it into a, a program loop, and it just rotates all week long. And so you'll, if you listen a lot, you're going to hear the same thing. Ian, I'm going to take once. your advice, so I don't know what day it'll be, but we'll... We'll do it once a Good. week on a particular day. Because I want to get you back in there, uh, and we just bought a satellite channel for it, and it's up there wow. now, and you know, there's probably a few people listening to it. I can't say a whole lot. <laughs> CIA, uh, but, all those guys. Oh, you well, probably. <laughs> uh, so let's actually go to the phones here. We've got somebody that has a question for you. It's Jeff in Maryland on the Amp Line. Hello, Jeff. Hey, everyone. Hey, you're on great with Lou. Hi, Jeff. Great, great to uh, especially see Lou on the show. This is terrific. Um, my question, I, I'm interested in this with a lot of people who have been principled libertarians, uh, in particular those who have been such uh, for, for many years as you have, Lou. And uh, you mentioned having met uh, Mises through your association with Arlington House and all of that. And I was wondering uh, how much of a libertarian were you at that point, or was he your primary influence, um, other influences as well, and, of course, your long association with the great uh, Murray Rothbard, if you would comment on those things, uh, I think that would be of great interest to the listeners. 
No, I was already a libertarian when I went to work at Arlington House, which was a conservative publishing company, although it did publish libertarians. Um, but the the owner of it, uh, the great Neil McCaffrey, was a conservative, and it, it uh, also had as a subsidiary the Conservative Book Club, which still exists. And uh, so, uh, uh, but I was a libertarian when I went there. I'd been a libertarian for many years, but I became more and more radical, I must say, over the years. Uh, Murray Rothbard had a strong influence on me in that regard. Was it was it Murray that turned you into an anarchist? It was Murray who turned me into an anarchist, yes. Very good. Me, same here. Jeff, Although, thanks for the call and the question. Appreciate it. Excellent. So, uh, anarchist is a word you've used a few times to describe not just yourself, but also Uh Why do you choose that word? Don't you feel like it has some baggage attached to it? Well, sure, and so does every, you know, I mean, the, the state always uh, seeks to destroy the language, to... Uh, trick people to fool us and uh, so they want to make that into a bad word uh, and they associate it with bomb throwing and that sort of thing in the past uh, so you can you know it's possible to say that you believe in a private property order you believe in an entirely voluntary order i mean there are mm-hmm. many ways to say it i like to say anarchist i like especially murray rothbard's formulation of anarcho-capitalist because there are anarchists who are communists who believe in the collective ownership of property uh, but uh, there's a great article by uh, stefan kinsella uh, oh, we LRC. love that guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, about <laughs> about uh, what is anarchism. And it's a great explanation. What he says is, you're an anarchist if you agree that it is wrong, always wrong, to use violence or the threat of violence against the innocent. Now, when you state it like that, everybody says, oh, well, of course, I'm not for that. But then you discuss taxes or, you know, a million and one other things. And, of course, they are for using violence or the threat of violence against the innocent. But if you are opposed to that, that makes you an anarchist. Doesn't mean you necessarily think an anarchist society could ever come about. Doesn't mean you necessarily know how such a thing would function or even if it could function. But you just think morally that it's never right, again, to use violence or the threat of violence against the innocent but only against the guilty. 1-800-259-9231. That is the SACL CAI toll-free line. Capitalist is another word that uh, has, you know, got a lot of baggage attached Yes, it does. To it. Why, uh, why embrace that one? Well, I think that, you know, there are problems with it. I mean, it's true that because it, uh, uh, in some parts of the world, capitalism is seen as the, say, the current American system, which is, right, which is a corporatist. It's actually fascist. Kind of, yeah. It's corporatist, yeah. It's corporatist. It's soft fascist, although becoming less soft by the day, <laughs> it seems really, sometimes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but I, I think because Mises used it, because Rothbard used it, uh, Hazlitt used it, I mean, that's sort of good enough for me. But I, I like, I say the free market, too. That's what I named the Institute's newsletter. Uh, so I think that there's, uh, you know, let a hundred flowers bloom. I mean, there are many different ways to describe the the system of freedom. And uh, I think capitalist is one, although I, I'll admit, like anarchists, that it's got baggage. So does the word liberal. Mm-hmm. I mean, we are yeah. liberals, too. But Classical, it's Classical liberals. liberals yeah. Well, but I mean, it's, you know, yeah. But well, they have to put that term in front of it to, yeah, to differentiate yeah. it. That's yeah. right. So you can't say liberal anymore because they ruined it. Yeah. yeah. So we just we have to deal with these things. I agree with you, Lou. I think there's, you know, a lot of... Problems and uh, upsides to using all these terms. But There's more coming up here. Your that. calls as well are welcome at 800 259 9231. That is the SACL CAI toll free line. Lou Rockwell is with us. That's that Lou Rockwell, the one from lourockwell.com. If you've got a question for him, 800 259 9231. He's here for another half an hour. We'll take your calls. This is Free Talk Live. By the way. This is Free Talk Live. You can take control of the airwaves if you dial in toll-free. Though calls uh, will be given preference if they're for Lou Rockwell. He is here in the studio with us for the remainder of this hour. 800-259-9231. That number brought to you by SACL CAI. You can join us on our website at freetalklive.com. You want to be kept in the loop with what's happening with the show? Go to news.freetalklive.com. To get signed up, you can follow us via email. Get our emailed updates. Uh, you can also uh, You can also get the Twitter feed or facebook do whatever way works best for you whichever delivery method you prefer you can get it it's all free over at news.freetalklive.com now what if you found out that the best liberty activists from around the world were moving to the same place in order to achieve liberty in their lifetimes would you want to join them well i did and you can too it's happening and you can be a part of it join the free state project at freestateproject.org that's freestateproject.org the man who created LouRockwell.com, the man who edits LouRockwell.com, also the founder of the Mises Institute, is here 
actually in the studio. I had the uh, the pleasure of having your sister, uh, Debbie, email me out of the blue a week and a half ago. And, hey, uh, I'm Lou Rockwell's sister, and we're coming to town, and we were interested in stopping by if you'd like to have us. And I said, sure, pick your day, and here you are. So, well, it's great to be here. Yeah, thanks great for coming out. And it's, it's a very uh, storied show, so it's uh, it's an honor to be on it. Well, thank you, and uh, it's an honor to have you here. Um, if we want to get back to these phone calls because people obviously have questions for you. It's it's probably I – mean, how often do you do radio appearances? Obviously, you have your own show, the Lou Rockwell Show, but you don't take calls on it. So. No, I, I, I used to do a lot of radio before 9-11, then somehow things dropped off after that. Um, people didn't want to hear this sort of <laughs> viewpoint. <laughs> well, you've been so, on the, that's you've unfortunate. Been on, you've certainly been on the – But I was uh, on a lot of shows – before that, now it's just occasionally. You, uh, you've been on the Andrew Napolitano show. Though. Yes, he's That's... been very nice to have me on a number of times. We've had him on once, and uh, I, I was shocked when I was watching him on one of the Stossel shows about how radical he was. I didn't realize. I, I thought he was going to be one of the Fox News kind of hosts where they pander to the liberty ideal but don't really mean what they say or, or won't go all the way. But there was one discussion he was having on uh, Fox News with uh, John Stossel where he he basically called for the abolishment of the military on Fox News. And I thought, wow, this guy's a real deal. And similarly, at uh, Liberty Forum, he gave a, a speech that was along those lines, too. Yeah. Also, he, he uh, once had Stossel tell him, you know, when you say taxation is theft, you make me look bad. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, the judge is great. And he's, yeah. he's uh, a very learned guy and he continues to learn and uh, more and more interested in our sorts of ideas. So it's great. Let's Great get man. to uh, these folks want to have, ask you some questions here. Let's start with Mark in Ohio. Mark, you're on with Lou Rockwell. Hey, Ian. Hey, Lou. Everybody, wow. What Hi, a Mark. treat this is. <laughs> Lou, uh, thanks for reading my email. I appreciate it. <laughs> sure. Thanks for sending it. Hey, uh, I always enjoy uh, watching you on with Napolitano, but it's quite a treat to have you uh, here tonight, actually live and in person uh, through the cam feed and all the rest. So um, what's your question for well, my question is, uh, basically, I was interested in learning, basically, the future of LRC and basically what plans are in the works for possibly the upgrades or additional features that might be added uh, here in the coming months or years, kind of what the goals and what the direction is of LRC. Well, I'd like to expand it, obviously. I want to expand the audience. I'd, I'd love to be able, for example, to advertise on something like the Drudge Report, a little bit beyond us right now. Because uh, it was sort of a shoestring operation, uh, uh, guys is it profitable? The Free State Project is LRC profitable? No, it's it's uh, it's almost profitable. Oh, okay, but it's not profitable. No, uh, be nice if it were. We all believe in profit. Sure, sure. <laughs> so. If you can profit from your activism, then I mean, that's the so best it, situation. It, it's a, uh, uh, but we have some. We have uh, people who give money too, and mm-hmm. we have our ad, income from advertising and from Amazon book commissions. Uh, we just this summer we had to sort of fight off some as can happen to websites a lot of uh, attacks, um, some of them ideologically motivated attacks on our donation system and that sort of thing. Um, but that sort of goes with the territory. There's also um, a step up, and we were talking off the line about the copyright trolling. People who uh, uh, want to use the new copyright laws to get to hu- levy huge uh, judgments against you. So we uh, had to do all kinds of – we had to sort of scramble to make sure the site was bulletproof from that standpoint. And, uh, but we keep growing, and uh, we want to keep growing. We want these ideas to uh, get out there. And I must say the, the best part of it is when I get emails, which happens very frequently from people who say, you entirely changed my, my view. I was a neocon. I was a Republican. I was a conservative or mm-hmm. some other horrible thing. And uh, now I'm a libertarian. Now I'm an anarchist. Uh, Makes now, it all worthwhile. Huh? Yeah, yeah, now I don't vote. You know, other great stuff. So mm-hmm. I'm yeah. one of those people, Lou, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great, Stephanie, yeah. So, Mark, I, I, uh, did that answer your I, question? Uh, it does, and I wanted to just follow up and let him know that uh, the blog is my homepage when I open up my browser every day. Oh, well, thank uh, you. It's a relief, uh, believe me, compared to all the other misinformation that we get in the world. It's kind of like um, an oasis, if you will. And, Thanks, uh, Mark. I appreciate it. Thank you for the call absolutely. tonight. Definitely appreciate hearing from you at 800-259-9231, uh, the SACL CAI toll-free line. I would meant to ask you, Lou, uh, so how did it get to be the number one liberty-oriented site? I mean, was it just a slow word-of-mouth growth process? Did it explode at a certain point in popularity, do you recall? Or were we just not even paying attention and all of a no, sudden no, you I woke mean, up? No, I mean, it, and- it, it uh, got started slowly, then it exploded, then actually the explosion slightly diminished. Mm-hmm. 
but now it's back up above uh, what the height was in the early days. So I don't, uh, you know, I, I hope it's onward and upward. Um, I do know that uh, it's read by all sorts of people in the government as well as in the private sector. But you got the right formula. You know, you've got daily content that changes. I mean, pretty much every single day of the week. And now even with uh, weekends that change because the blog posts are happening all weekend long. And so you've got something to, to keep people coming back. As Mark pointed out, he's got it as his, uh, as his homepage. And it's that kind of thing that's going to keep, keep you where you are and make things better. And when the Department of Homeland Security recently was cutting off access to controversial websites... Uh, to their employees, LRC was one of those controversial websites. You should, that should be a badge informed. of honor. Yeah, yeah it is that's a badge how you know you made it yeah. big. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's continue with Alex in New Jersey. You're on uh, Free Talk Live with Lou Rockwell on the amp lines. Hey, guys. Uh, Ian, I was wondering if you could explain to Lou some of the activism, uh, both politically and apolitically, that's been going on in Keene. And, uh, Lou, if I could just get your thoughts on what do you think the best direction is to have liberty in our lifetime. Do you think that there should be equal amounts of civil disobedience and political activism? Do you believe in civil disobedience more so than political activism? Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Thanks, well, Alex. I, I think a big tent is the approach. So, you know, the division of labor applies to this part of the world as well as other parts. So some people want to be in politics. That's not my own, although I, I, I once was in politics, very deeply in politics, before going straight. But... <laughs> But it's, uh, you know, this. if you like politics, great. I would never urge anybody to commit civil disobedience, but I certainly approve of and honor the people who do, because, of course, you're taking, uh, you know, sort of taking your life in your own hands. But it's a great thing. It's a great example. And uh, there's intellectual activism. Uh, I think really the, f- the first thing, and I, this is, I speak from my own background here, I think the first thing you have to do is educate yourself. Sure. I mean, that is the one person you can actually really influence on. You hope to influence others, but the one person you can surely influence is yourself. Well, if you don't know the ideas of liberty and you uh, you can't communicate them effectively, then you're kind of stuck in a difficult position. That's correct, if, yeah. So you've got to read, read, read. I, first of all, I love the Advocates for Self-Government, by the way. They're one of the best. I've, I've no, There's no shortage of plugs for those folks here on this show, and I think they might even be sponsoring us soon. But, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, they've got a real great resource for people that want to get better at communicating the ideas. First, you learn ha- what the ideas are. Uh, and, of course, the Mises Institute has all kinds of great free stuff, online audios and uh, p- papers. Books, and videos, books. like anything you could think of. And then hundreds exhaustive. of books, thousands of hours of videos, audios, papers, articles, all er, for uh, free. journals, all for free. We should mention uh, the website, Mises.org, M-I-S-E-S yes. dot you. org. Of course, LouRockwell.com, that's L-E-W-R-O-C-K. Is there another way? Have you registered to any other? Uh, I, I, I registered L-O-U. Oh, good, 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 yeah. good yeah. move. Okay. Yeah. So we don't have to spell it out then. LouRockwell.com. <laughs> Uh, you can go and get some great stuff there, too. Still enough time maybe to sneak your call in here at 800-259-9231. Alex wanted me to explain the activism here, but, I mean, Sam was just here from ObscuredTruth.com a moment ago taking some photos, and uh, you were already aware that we were arrested. So clearly you, you, oh boy, you're yes, yeah. aware to some extent of what's going on here in Keene. Uh, so we'll come back, maybe talk a little bit about the Free State Project mm-hmm. uh, and, and you know what your great. level of familiarity is with great. that. Also, maybe time for your call at 800-259-9231. If you want to talk to Lou Rockwell, this is your last chance because he's only here till the end of the hour. 800-259-9231. This is Free Talk Live. This is Free Talk Live. You can take control of the airwaves and dial in toll-free at 800-259-9231. That number brought to you by SACL CAI. 1-800-259-9231. Join us online at freetalklive.com. You can enjoy all the features there on the site for free. And if you like the show and you want to help support Free Talk Live, there is a way to do that. In fact, there are a few different ways. One of them is to become a Free Talk Live amplifier for as little as 3 bucks a month. We will take that money in and reinvest it into the show. We'll use it to get on more radio stations around the country, to bring more Internet listeners on board with the program, and thereby expose new people to the ideas of freedom, which is something that uh, we do, I think, and we do a decent job of it here. Lou Rockwell uh, also does a very good job of it, uh, probably the best, because his is the most, uh, the most viewed website of all the Liberty websites on the entire internet, LouRockwell.com, and he's with us in studio tonight. Thank you again, Lou, for spending a, what is a portion of basically a vacation with us. Oh, this is this is vacation to be here. Okay, good. Yeah, good. it's a lot of fun. Great. 
Uh, so we're going to try to pack as much uh, as we can here in the remainder of this hour. And Stephanie, you had a question for Lou. Yeah, I did want to jump in with a question. I was curious. Um, I alluded to this before and said that I was one of the people whose viewpoint you were instrumental in uh, changing towards liberty. I was wondering how you first got introduced to the ideas of liberty, Lou. Well, I think I have to trace it to my dad, who was a Taft Republican. Uh-huh. But I also think I agree with Ron Paul that uh, uh, at least some of us are born free. We're just born that way. And my, my first sort of libertarian memory is of uh, in the seventh grade arguing with a teacher of mine. Uh, this is before the 64 Civil Rights Act. Uh, but he was arguing for such a law mm-hmm. whereby um, the owner of a store or a hotel would be forced to uh, admit people he didn't want to admit. And I remember arguing with him and, and saying, uh, you know, how, how is that right? I didn't have, I didn't, it was a, a pretty primitive form of argumentation, but I just couldn't understand how you, the government would have the right to force a property owner to admit customers he didn't want. Wasn't that, seemed to me just wrong. So I think the fact that it seemed wrong to me, uh, I later learned more about why it was wrong, mm. but just yeah. that it was instinctually wrong to me. I think, it, I, I think I was sort of a natural libertarian. Yeah, I think a lot of people have those natural inclinations uh, toward being sympathetic to the ideas, mm-hmm. and it, it helps when you can sort of find that out, I guess, and draw it out of them. You think? And then, of course, the state That's does its best do. to, uh, yeah, to, exactly. to beat it out of them permanently. So they, through the uh, government schools. Yeah, through yeah. the government indoctrination camps. Uh, got another call here for you, Lou. Uh, Stephen is on the line in Florida. You're on uh, Free Talk Live with Lou Rockwell. Hello, uh, Mr. Rockwell. First of all, I have it on good authority that uh, Mandrick wants to give you a free baklava. Hey, uh, magnificent. <laughs> I'm jealous. I've actually got some in the freezer here. He can sample it in advance. It's very good. Right. Uh, and then secondly, um, you know, uh, when I was a kid, I, I bought a certain brand of car, uh, a certain model of car that I had never noticed on the road before. And then after I owned it, I started seeing them everywhere. Sure. Uh, likewise, when I became a libertarian, then later on, pretty close to an anarchist, um, I started noticing more and more people, you know, speaking that sort of language, uh, talking about libertarianism and so forth. So, from my perspective, as kind of a newcomer, it seems like it's on the rise. But I don't have the decades-long perspective that you have, and I wonder if you could just speak to that. Is the idea of freedom on the rise? No Stephen, thanks question. for the call. Oh, no question. It's vastly ahead of where it was uh, 20 or 30 years ago. Uh, of course, we also have things headed in the opposite direction in Washington and other uh, centers of government power. But I think especially among young people, there's just a tremendous, uh, tremendously increased uh, interest in the ideas of liberty and Austrian economics and all, all related ideas. And I think that uh, despite the efforts of the government schools we were talking about before to dumb everybody down and uh, make sure that you never have a critical thought in your head and just obey the government, uh, give them your money, go fight their uh, evil wars, and so forth. Yeah, I think there's there's a lot more radicalism. There's a lot more interest in uh, what the government is doing. Right after 9-11, just to take a more uh, that one example, it seemed like we were going to go down. I mean, it seemed like the whole place was going to become totalitarian, that every American agreed with the war on so-called war on terror and the domestic police state and, and the whole business. But it wasn't true, and so there were more and more and more dissidents and uh, I think it's I think there's thrilling things going on sort of below the radar screen. And, yeah, we're seeing more cars on the road that we recognize. <laughs> Let's go to Chaz listening in Indiana. Chaz, you're on with Lou Rockwell on Free Talk Live. Oh, hi, guys. How you doing? Uh, haven't called into the show in over a year now. Uh, it's great to uh, be talking with you today, uh, Ian, and especially with you, Lou. Uh, one thing I want to ask you about, we've all got our ways of trying to convert you know, your conservatives and your liberals to, uh, to, to the ideas, the better ideas, much better ideas of liberty. I'd like to know what your ideas would be for converting uh, liberals to uh, the ideas of liberty, uh, Lou. If you could uh, comment on that, please, sir. Thank you, Chance, for the call. Well, I think, first of all, we have to make sure you know, we are well-read. I mean, to the extent that you're well-read, people will seek you out. I, don't, I wish that it were possible to sort of grab some guy by the lapels and shake him and explain the truth to him. It, that does not normally work. Uh, so I think if first you make yourself sort of a beacon by knowing all this sort of thing, understanding what's happening in the economy, why are we in this business cycle, just to take that one example, why are we in this very long recession, maybe it's a depression. Uh, so the extent that you know things like that, or you understand why the wars that the U.S. is fighting and the police state that's being erected here are so wrong and so counterproductive, so anti-civilizational, 
just make us poorer, all the various arguments, then people will approach you. So I think that's, I think if, to the extent that you know about things, you'll be a beacon, people will approach you, and then you can influence them. And uh, by the way, I highly recommend uh, Healing Our World as a, as a great tool. Mm-hmm. If, if you've got somebody that you, you, you've managed to hook, at least to get them interested to uh, to consume some information, you know, getting them the right information is also important. So uh, Mary is great. A yeah. book like that where it comes from a compassionate perspective mm-hmm. uh, really is going to be a – I think it will do wonders for somebody who might – consider themselves a liberal. Yeah, uh, I think it's important to find out what's important. Like, know your audience is, is right. key. Find out what's important to the person that you're trying to reach and then appeal to that. Absolutely. So the Free State Project, here you are, Lou. Uh, you're in New Hampshire. And, I'm in uh, the epicenter. Well, I appreciate that. That's really yeah. uh, quite the compliment. I don't know. There, there's certainly more people that have moved to uh, to Manchester. It's the bigger uh, the bigger city, but I, it is nice to be considered the epicenter. Certainly, a lot of the the newsworthy stuff comes out of uh, here in Keene. But Not people right. have moved all across New Hampshire, and I'm sure you were aware of the Free State Project early on. Uh, what did you think initially of the idea, and and how aware are you now of how well it's come along since then? You know, it, in the beginning, I must say I was skeptical. I was for it. But I was skeptical. But as the years have gone by and all the good things that you guys have done, I'm very impressed and I've become more and more interested. And uh, uh, I've always been sympathetic, but I'm I've, let's say I've become an enthusiastic supporter. That's so, great. So, uh, so can we get an endorsement for the uh, Yeah, the no, project? I definitely endorse the Free State Project. Fantastic. And uh, especially like what you guys are doing in Keene. I'm more familiar with Keene than I am with Manchester, but I'm, there must be great stuff going on all across the state. How do you get uh, the word about what's happening up here? specifically keen people write me or or i i you know get google alerts and i follow so many different news sites so people either write me or i see things but i'm interested in keen because of you know my family background and uh also you do amazing things here that that get in the libertarian oriented news so uh that's how i hear about it now a lot of the controversy that has bubbled up here in in uh, new hampshire amongst the liberty activists has been generated from the activism that's gone on here in mm-hmm. Keene. It's uh, so much of it has been very controversial, simply because civil disobedience upsets some people, and then of course the types of civil disobedience that have been done upsets other people. And and there's a certain undercurrent uh, amongst, uh, obviously, it, in my opinion, it's the people that are connected to the state, uh, the people that are working for or have uh, you know family in for the uh, working for the government that are very upset if you look at the newspaper comment section, angry comment after angry comment after angry, just vitriolic hatred uh, towards the activists here. What do you think about that? Well, I'm not surprised at the hatred. In fact, I must say, even though I I knew the history of how the Nazis came to power, it wasn't until after 9-11 that I sort of emotionally understood that when I saw the reaction of so many Americans. And you're still, you know, seeing that sort of thing here. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, uh, Aquinas, as Aquinas said, an unjust law is no law at all. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with civil disobedience and everything right. Again, you have to. That's a decision one has to make for oneself because it is a very serious decision. Um, but I think it's, I, I think it's great. I mean, some people write books, some people commit acts of civil disobedience, some people have radio shows. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a whole you know. Some people do. Some all people the become great free market <laughs> doctors, right? I mean, there's a whole you know any, any number of things that are, are going on. And it's all to the good, and it all combines to the great cause of liberty. We've had so much uh, amazing things happen because we've actually gotten people concentrated here. Uh, and, and as I was telling you during one of the breaks, there's only a few dozen people in this area, and you've already – I mean, it's on your radar. And, oh, I mean, absolutely. You, and, you, and there's only a, literally a few dozen people here that are in any way active, and most of them are single guys that really aren't as active as they might be if they were, say, uh, your age and had you know more disposable income at their, mm-hmm. uh, at their hands. So I think we're going to see incredible growth in the next 10, 20 20 years that's just going to be just mind-boggling as far as the, the, the activism that will become possible because, well, before I moved here, there was only a handful of folks uh, down in Sarasota, Florida, and they barely did anything. And up here, it's literally the best activists I've ever come across. So thanks oh. for, for coming up and uh, spending some time with us. Oh, sure. Great to be here. Thank you. Maybe we'll have you back on one of these days. If thanks, you'll, Ian. Uh, thanks, you'll you'll again. Yeah, thank you, Lou. LouRockwell.com, the man behind it. Uh, get over there, bookmark it, and uh, visit it because it's updated daily. More coming up. Free Talk Live in moments. <laughs> 